And today I want to talk to you about these last days in the context of the counting of the Omer. You, you heard me counting of the Omer. And I want to connect some dots to you today about the counting of the Omer. Because notice in the end of the counting of the Omer, people think you're just counting the Omer and you're done. But actually after you finish counting the Omer, I want you to pay attention to the fact that we're, t- we're praying for the establishment of the temple and for the fact that all the nations are going to come and worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. What's the connection between the counting of the Omer and the final Geula, the final redemption? Why the counting of the Omer is so important? And this week uh, in the parasha, parasha Temo, of course, we're in the very famous chapter, Leviticus 23. We're writing about the Omer, the, count, the counting of the Omer. And I want to give you another perspective today on how to view the counting of the Omer and understand the Omer, understand the Geula. I hope you will read the Rivka Remnant and you ask these difficult questions so we understand it together. The title of the Shi'u today is The 50 Sfirot of the Omer and the Coming of the Mashiach. Now, um, to understand this, we, we want to go straight to the text and I want you to, to pay attention to a couple of things about the counting of the Omer that the Torah tells us. It says here in the English, and from the day which you bring the sheaf of elevation offering, the day after the Sabbath, you shall count off seven weeks, they must be complete. Okay, so we are commanded according to the Torah to count seven complete weeks, and then the 50th day, as we know, is Shavuot, 50 days from Pesach all the way to Shavuot. Now, I want you to pay attention to the language of the Torah about the nature of the counting. Now, there is different words in the Hebrew language to describe the idea of counting. The word that is used here to, to, to describe the counting is the word Safatim, Sfira. That's where we the word Sfira. That's where we get the Hebrew word for Sipur. To tell something, to tell something in authority and in power, but the clue beyond the counting of the Omer is actually found inside the Hebrew language. And I want you to notice this. Every time that God is taking Israel from the old to the new, throughout the scripture, he always used the word lecha. Like, for example, when Noah was building the ark and he's going to take the world from the old world to the new, he says, Ase lecha. You notice the word lecha to you. Okay? Why to you? Because I'm, I'm preparing you to go from the old to the new. Later on, Genesis chapter 12, God says, Lech lecha. Why? He's taking him from the old world in Padan Waram, he's taking him to Canaan. Later on, in the wilderness, God says to Israel, Asu lachem, make for yourself a tabernacle. Why? Because I'm taking you out of Egypt. I'm taking you out of Egypt and I'm taking you to a new land. The new land is the land of Melkanani. The idea of lecha to you is always an idea that is really important to understand because it's talking about a paradigm shift from an old to a new, the, the entire idea of the counting of the Omer is going from the old and to the new. It's ever redemptive part to it. And now if you look at the text here, you don't see it in the English, but you do certainly see it inside the Hebrew. Look how the counting is supposed to take place, okay? It says, Safartem, the word sfira count, but you don't see it in the English, but you see it in Hebrew. The word ir lachem, the second word in yellow on the text, the word lachem, mean count for yourself. So the really great, the text should read is count for yourself the shift, the, the, the shift offering, okay? 
the word Omer is shif, it's talking about a specific quantity. Now, the word Lachem here is important because it's, it is not a singular world. Okay, it's not a word that is a singular word. It's a word that is a plural word. And one of the secrets that you're going to find out about the counting of the Omer is that the entire counting of the Omer is something that is a corporate mitzvah rather than the individual mitzvah. That's going to be very important for us to understand. Okay? And he says, Safatem Lachem. Why? Because God says, for these 50 days, from Pesach to Shavuot, I want you to count for yourself, meaning prepare yourself. Okay, the word safatem lachem is to prepare yourself. Prepare yourself to what? That's the important question that we have to ask. What are we preparing ourselves in those 50 days? Now, one of the things that I want you to understand about, about the counting of the Omer, one of the names of counting of the Omer, counting of the Omer is the... Um, the mount, it's called the, the Mount of Ziv. The Mount of Ziv is the Mount of Light. So this idea is that every day that we are counting, we should become, the light should increase and increase and increase. So the entire thing about the counting of the Omer is known by this, this third, this 50 days, is, is, the, is the, called the Festival of Light. It's one of the names, Festival of Light, for this, because the light, is being increasing. Now, I want you to pay attention to this. Uh, in Likutei Sichot, the Rabbi, uh, Rabbi Schneerson explains something about this. Again, about these words that we have just said, Safartem Lachem, you count yourself. It's a preparation. He said, the truth is that the counting of the Omer serves as a preparation to the giving of the future Torah which is a form of revelation for the future. I want you to hear it one more time. These 50 days is a preparation to the giving of another Torah, which is a form of a greater revelation in the future. In the entire counting is because we're going from an old Torah, preparing ourselves to the new Torah. One of the biggest questions that you have to ask yourself during the counting of the Omer is, am I ready to receive a new Torah? The entire concept of these 50 days is like going to a boot camp to prepare ourselves to receive a new Torah. Now, what do you mean a new Torah? Why are we talking about new Torah, those 50 days? Haven't we already received the Torah? The answer is yes and no. I want you to consider the words that the book of Micah chapter 7 is telling us. Micah 7.15 says, as in the days, and I want you to underline those words, as in the days when you came out of Egypt, I will show them wonders in the futures. Again, God is saying that Geula, that the redemption is cyclical. Redemption is cyclical and more than cyclical, it have layers, layers of different dark God. And it says, as of the days, meaning as in the past, in the future, I am going to show them wonders. I'm going to show them miracles. The, this is what this idea, but there is a problem in the text. How many days did it take to go out of Egypt? How many days did it take to go out of Egypt? It took, friends, only one night to go out of Egypt. The night that we went out of Egypt is on the 15th. On 15th of Nisan, we left. On the day of 15th of Nisan, we left Egypt. So why is it that the text is telling us as of the days 
like the, the exodus out of Egypt took many, many days. No, the, the exodus out of Egypt did not take many days. It took one day. And this is the secret of understanding the Sphira of Lachem to you from the old to the new. To the new. Listen to what Rabbi Schneerson says on this, this is said. He asked the question, why Micah, the prophet, used the term the days of going out of Egypt, or in Hebrew, Be'yeme, to describe the Exodus. After all, the Exodus took place in one day, which is in the 15th of Nisan. And here he give the answer, the fullness of the Exodus out of Egypt will take place in the future redemption soon in our days until this day arrive we must be redeemed by leaving the borders of egypt the children of israel even today have found themselves in the exodus process as as and as time progresses we reach a higher madrega meaning a higher level until we will be able to overcome Egypt through what? Through our very own avoda. This is very important interpretation. The reason the text tells us that we left Egypt in days and not day, or even though we left in one day, is because there is a physical Egypt and there is a spiritual Egypt. There is what's called the city border of Egypt. The spiritual aspect of Egypt that represent the process as of in the days of living Egypt. Where are you right now? You're in the process of leaving Egypt. Have you left Egypt yet? No, not fully. None of us left Egypt completely. And for that, we are entering into this boot camp that is called the 50 days. Those are the 50 final days that we are saying we are getting ourselves ready to leave Egypt. And what does that mean? Leaving Egypt, it means that I am ready to receive a Mount Sinai experience like in my lifetime my question to you today are you ready to receive in your lifetime a mount sinai like experience this is what the counting of the omer is all about is preparing for another mount sinai experience even greater than this experience so today we're going to talk about this. What does it look like? And here Rabbi Milubavitch is telling us that that is the reason that we are counting forward. We're not counting backward. We're not counting 50, 49, 48. Why? Because we must prepare the world. Listen to this. He says, he said here in, so, so the last thing we read, he said, each day, in the counting of Omer represent a madrega level until we're able to overcome Egypt through our avodah. Okay? What is the number 50? What is the number 50? The more 50 in Hebrew is the word hamishim. What is inside the word hamishim? The root word of the word hamishim is the word mashiach. Is the word Mashiach. In essence, this entire counting is a counting that represents our ability to be ready to be in union with the Messiah. 50 days God is giving us to prepare for a union with Him. And the question is, what are we to do as we're preparing for the 50th days? Well, one thing that we have to do is we have to focus on our avodah. And this is what it says. It says, the nature of our avodah by leaving Egypt is by what? Is by counting sefira represented by the counting of the Omer in reaching the complete exodus. What are you counting toward today? You are counting toward your fullness. Now it is clear why the Omer is counted at night. 
Why? Because the night represent the Kalut, represent the Exa. Remember, we are counting the Omer after sunset. Why? The words, and there was evening and there was morning, Genesis chapter 1, remind us that creation start with darkness, not with light. And through the Avodah, we must prepare the world to be a vessel to the heavenly light. Let me say to you again, I want you to end it. And through the Avodah, we must prepare to the world to be a vessel of the heavenly light. Today, our job is to take the darkest of the situation and to prepare and to condition the darkest and the darkest of the situation to be able to receive heavenly light. This is a picture of you. You are right now in darkness because you are separated from God. You are separated from Mashiach, but you are conditioned yourself through darkness to be able to be able to receive the heavenly light and that's why god says i am the creator of darkness and i'm the creator of light why because even the darkness it can be used to condition today our souls our neshama and ultimately the world to receive the light so the idea behind this 50 days on an individual level, not even on a copper level, is the ability that we says there was chaos and then there was light. How God created the, the Garden of Eden out of chaos. He didn't create it out of light. He had created it out of darkness. That is what the text is actually saying. So these 50 days represent the opportunities that is given to you. Now you're probably going to be shocked what is the name of this opportunity? Write yourself in your notes this point. I am right now during those 50 days. We say the Siata de Shemaya is a day that the heavens helping more than regular days for you to make a tikkunim of true avodah through through those things so that you take it dark and, and make it light. But the question is, what is it that you need to do? And how are you to view those opportunities and how to be able to overcome them? We're going to get them. This is very important to you today. And I want you to track this with me. Listen to what it says. The counting of the Omer represents the Avodah of Birurim. Meaning Avodah of separating light and darkness. You heard me last week speaking about Amos chapter 9, separating dark and separating dark and, and light. That's what God is doing. The counting of the Omers represents prophetically the Biruim that each and every one of us need to do. Meaning having a spiritual lens through Avodah to biru, to separate the things from below, below, the things to above. As the light after darkness purify the entire world from us below to the heavens. The sphera, meaning counting day one, day two, day three, represent the ongoing korban sacrifice. Remember, they have to bring the sheaf offering every day meaning that the ongoing sephira avodah today since we don't bring the shift offering what do we do every day we are counting it is as we are going to bet amigdash today and we bring the shift offering day in and day out our avodah today serve as a memorial beloved for this ongoing counting as the temple is being standing today when you say baruch ata adonai eloheinu melech haolam and you count day one and then say made the temple stand why do you say made the temple stand because the temple is not standing today so basically when you're saying day one you're saying i am committed to the avodah that reveal light into the world and not to darkness i need you to understand what you're saying every day every day when you pray and every day that you say the bracha what you're saying i am committed for the bringing the light through the darkness to the world. This is, this is the essence of the bracha. And that's why we're saying at the end of it, God, uh, build the temple. We want the temple. 
Okay? So listen to what it says here, what the rabbi is saying here. He said, this fira, meaning your daily counting, represent your ongoing sacrifice. Meaning that the ongoing sefira, day one, day two, day three, is not some game of arithmetic. It's represent the avodah, and specifically which avodah? Avodah that reveal a light from separating it from darkness. Today, the job that you have in those 50 days to ready yourself for the new Torah is to separating light from darkness. There is no greater job that we have today of separate than separating light from darkness, and we do it through the mitzvot. Through the avodah, through the acts of loving kindness. This are we doing it. We cannot do today the shifofer. We don't have bet mikdash. But what we are doing in the sphira, we are pretending as we do it in zikaron of the bet mikdash, who is not standing and we're praying for the bet mikdash to be built. Meaning that the only ongoing sephira avodah, there is a special power and i love this word in those 50 days there is special power to prepare the world through the sephira counting look what the rabbi said to the coming of the mashiach in these 50 days there is a special power that is found right now in the world and i can tell you since, since pesach since the night of pesach till now we as an organization have seen more signs more martyrs wonder, wonders more miracles than any time in the year before why because there is extra help from the heaven to separate light, to separate light from darkness. Why? Because when we are separating from the darkness, the light, the Mashiach, Hamishim. Again, what is the word Hamishim? The word Hamishim is the same word as the word Meshichim. Take the word Hamishim 50, flip the letter, you get the word Meshichim, Messianic. Who is Messianic? What does it mean to be Messianic? Oh, yeah, I need to dress like an Orthodox Jew. That's what makes me Messianic. Oh, I need to, to have a big, big, long beard. That's what makes me Messianic. Oh, no, that's not what makes you Messianic. What makes you Messianic? His ability to be ready for the 50th day that is called the day of Mashiach. That's what the word Hamishim means. When how do you do it? By separating the things in the world that is not of him to the things in the world that are of him. That is the separation that we must make in those 50 days. And on those 50 days, we are doing it in ongoing basis. This is very important. For us to understand the counting of the Omer and how significant what we are talking about here today. Because this is going to be ushering this. Listen to what it says. The Likutei Mooran, Rabbi Nachman of Breslov says, and this parallel the creation of the world. At first darkness and afterwards light. Darkness identified the absence of advice. As in the word of Job, who is in the darkness counsel with word. What darkness represent? Lack of wisdom, lack of understanding, lack of revelation. What do we need to pray for today? We need to pray for wisdom. We need to pray for godly counsel. We can need to pray for our godly governors, godly prime minister, godly president. This is all those things that we must pray for today. And how do we do it? Because afterward, when council depth, deep water are revealed, look what's happened. This is revealing, that's what this text says, revealing deep things out of the darkness. And the more that the light council is revealed, the darkness, which is the absence of godliness, the absence of counsel, it dispelled. The stronger faith grows. I need you to understand right now, if there is an abundance of darkness, it means that there is a potential for abundance of light to be extracted out of the darkness. But if there is abundance of darkness, it means what we have to dig in deeper. 
And that's what those 50 days are. You know, first, we present our own reflection of our own darkness. What is dark in our life that we need to deal with? What is dark in our community? What is dark in our society? What are those things that reveal them to us, God? And then bring in the light to extract holiness out of this darkness today. And that is something that you and I have to fight. We need to fight those things. And those 50 days are the days where the heavens are helping you and helping me more than any other way. So what is happening right now in the world? Chaos. Don't go, oh, look what's happened. Just turn on the news. Watch the news for five minutes. You will be depressed. You will be depressed. But you know what? Rather to look in that and become depressed, say to yourself, this is the opportunity for the Beruim. This is the opportunity for me to take upon myself the ascension to the number 50, which means mean the day of Mashiach. If number one, day one represent a world that is completely broken in the ultimate darkness, what do you think the number 50 represent? The word Hamishim is the word Messiah. So you start with complete darkness and you end out with a world that Messiah can reign in. And it starts with you today. Can the Messiah reign in you to the point that you can receive a new Torah? Can the Messiah reign in your family so that your family can receive a new revelation? Can he, can he reign in your synagogue? Can he reign in those places? This is the type of questions that we have to ask ourselves as we go forward. And we have to go forward those days, day after day and after day. You see, look at what the text is actually is telling us. He says, speak to the children of Israel. This is from the Torah portion. Now I want you to notice this because we all want to reach 50. There's not one person who is watching me right now who said, I don't want to reach the 50. This is the coming of the Mashiach, the Gula. But look what that he said. Speak to the children of Israel saying to them, when you enter to the land, I am giving to you and you reap the harvest, you shall what? Bring your first Omer your first sheaf of your harvest to your priest. Look at the yellow in Ibu. Who is enter? When you enter, plural, the land that I am giving to you, plural. And what is it said? The harvest that I am giving to you, plural. I want you to understand something about reaching to the level 50. Three times in the Torah portion this week, in one verse, God says, Lachem, Lachem, Lachem. I want you to say it. Lachem, Lachem, Lachem. I'm giving to you corporately. The counting of the Omer, the ability to reach the 50th level belongs to all of us together. It doesn't belong to an individual by itself. It's a corporate event. Look what's happening next weekend in Paris. And you, some people say, well, I don't care. I don't live in Paris. I don't care what's happening in Europe. Some people are looking and say, well, who cares about Africa? I have no interest in Africa. Let me tell you why you should care. Because the messianic movement is commissioned to become truly Meshichim. What's the word Meshichim? 50. How do we get to 50? The only way we can reach 50 is if we work together. The entire counting of the Omer belongs to the remnant belong to the corporate is not belong to the individual friend the mitzvah of the omer is belonging to the community so if your brother is stumbling and he's stuck in level one and he cannot do the biru it is your job to be your brother keeper and pick him up and help him or when a rabbi telling you hey we need support right now in order to build a messianic synagogue and only a handful of people are coming and supporting it. Guess what? It's going to affect you just as much as affecting them. Because the only way we are reaching 50, the only way we can reach 50 is if we work together. And if the text is telling us something about the ascension process. The ascension process belongs to the community, not to the individual. The Avodah is a community-based work. 
We better be able to launch a messianic synagogue. We better be able to do motor or revival. We better be able to meet the needs of all the messianic communities all over the world. Because different people are stuck in different level of darkness. And you need to understand this. The thing that they're dealing with in France are not the same thing that they're dealing with in Africa. The thing that they're dealing with in India are not the same thing that they're dealing with in South America. We are stuck in a different madraga between 1 and 50. And the only way that we can come up and we can get there is if we help to lift one another, carry one on one another, as it says in the book of Galatians, to carry each other burden. I have a burden. I have a real burden. You want to know why I'm going to Africa? Because I have a burden for my brothers. And I understand that my salvation, my own salvation, the birur, is not complete until the Lamb are returning to Ju Ju Judaism with Messiah. The Beru not complete, meaning that I am not saved. Until, until as it says in the prayer for the counting of the Omer, until we see every nation making him king, meaning that the nation reaching the level of 50. Gula cannot come to Jerusalem, beloved. So today we have an opportunity here. To raise it up and to lift each other up. Kitavo, you come to 50, to the land. What did the land represent? The Geula represent redemption. It is not love. It is action. Stop using this word love. Love, love is in action. It's in an action. The harvest is in action. It's a vodah. Bringing the Omer, bringing the offering, bring the tzedakah. tzedakah. Well, what do you think? Everybody can bring the tzedakah? No, not everybody. There are so many who are poor, who are needed, that could not. But he said, you bring it corporately. Corporately. And what does it become? It's become the first fruit. Look what it says. And it will become the first ship, the first fruit of the harvest. Well, what did Paul says? Paul says that if the first fruit is holy, so will be the entire harvest. Today, if we have enough surplus of sheaf to bring up, we can bring the entire body of Messiah from level 1 or 2 or 3 all the way to level 50, beloved. What an opportunity we have before us. And that's what the text continues. And then he will shift, he will elevate the sheep before the Lord, the high priest, for acceptance in whose behalf? Your behalf. Who is the your? The your represent a community. We are a community. And we have to understand that the only way that we can become ready for the number 50 is if we work as a community, a diverse community that understand that we win or we lose together. I know that in the church world they teach you it's all about it. No, it's not. It's about us. It's about us working together. It's us elevating on that day. Again, look at the language. On the day you elevate the sheaf, you will offer also a burnt offering. A lamb to Adonai in these days. And he said, until this very day, until you brought the offering to your God, you shall eat no bread and you pre uh, or, or, or parched grain or fresh ears, which means, here's the definition. Okay? And then, and only in day, and from this day, you can start to count. This is important, beloved. I want you to hear what I'm telling you. When is the counting up to the coming of Mashiach start? That is starting in day one, or is start, when is it actually starting? This is a big news for you. Remember what I told you earlier about Micah 7.15? He says, as of the days of you leaving Egypt. When is the day starting? I have a flesh for you. The days are not starting the day that you say, I reject Christianity. I reject Jesus. And I believe in Yeshua now. That is not when the day is counting. That is not when we start to count. One, two, three, four. You know when we start in the counting of the spiritual Omer up to the day 50, it is starting when you put somebody else above you. 
That is when it's starting. That's why it's used the word dead days. What is the days? Is it two days? Is it 50 days? El Ghazal even said that, that there is a possibility we don't have to wait until 50. We do not have to wait until, why we don't have to wait? Because if there's so much a spiritual surplus from Hashem, we don't have to wait until 50. The days are starting. The counting forward starting when we look holistically of the entire house of Israel. The natural branch, the grafted in branch, the anusim, the scattered. And when we have this holistic view and say, this is the house of Israel. This is the remnant. And this remnant have to reach the level of 50. So that's when it started, when we're taking upon us of the burden of the community, beloved. And that's why the Avodah now is so important. Look at what it says. The Halakha, let's learn a little bit Halakha together. Halakha teaches that if we forget to count, God forbid, the counting of the Omer for one day, the rest of the days are counted without the blessing. This is a shocking thing. If you forgot to count according to the Halakha, one day of the counting of the Tomer, you are not allowed by Jewish law to say, Baruch Atah Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Asher Kishan B'mitvotav Tzifanu Al Sfirat HaOmer. And the question is why? I just miss one day. The rabbis of Israel explained to us something. They said that there are no shortcuts. And if we're trying to take any type of shortcut in reaching, reaching Hamishim, in reaching Mashiach, in reaching the Keula, it is as we strip ourselves and we strip other from the blessing. And that's why Chazal say, why? 49 days are the days of the Sephira. The 50th belong to the Lord. That's the day of the wedding. Of the mitzvot. Of the avodah. Each day represents its own mitzvah. By passing mana mitzvah. By passing the entire tikkun. Say this word with me right now. By passing one mitzvah. By passing one opportunity to do a tikkun. In Africa or in Asia or in South America. By passing one mitzvah. Meaning we bypass the entire tikkun. Some of us have this type of mentality. Ah, we can bypass here, we can cut, cut corner here. No, we can't. No, we can't. If we are to get to the 50, we cannot skip a step. Because that's the way the, the, the light is being extracted out of darkness. It's being extracted out of darkness by taking the pain. It's called the bear pangs of the coming of the Messiah because there is a pain involved. I am in pain. My wife is in pain. My son is in pain. My ministry is in pain. But we understand something. That the pain is necessary to reveal the light out of darkness. And that's why our Messiah made this point so clear. And I quote him. Now you will understand him in the context of Sfirat HaOmer and the Halakha we, we just read. Don't think that I come to abolish the Torah or the prophets. I have not come to abolish, but I came to complete it. Yes, indeed. I tell you that until heaven and earth pass away, not so much of a yod. Not one sphira, not one day, just change the world, not one sphira or a stroke will be passed from the Torah. Not until everything must happen has happened. So whoever disobeyed the list of this mitzvot and teaching them to, to teach others to do so will be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever obeys and teaches those will be great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, unless your righteousness is far greater than all the Torah teachers of the Purshim, you will certainly not enter the kingdom of heaven. I want you to understand what Yeshua says. Yeshua says, when you're counting 50, don't skip 27. Don't skip 29. Don't skip 37 because you don't like it. The Geulah 
the complete geula out of Egypt mean that you have to go from the ultimate beginning to the ultimate end. My challenge to you today is you're counting the, the, the counting of the Omer. What shortcuts are you taking in your life? What shortcut are you taking in your relationship with Hashem, in your mitzvot, in your relationship with other? What, what kind of shortcut are we taking? Beloved, today is the day that we want the counting for us. Lachem to you. What is say? Safatem lachem. Who are you counting? Not for me. Count for us. What is he saying? Parashat Modi Shabbat. Count for the community. Go through the pain. Go through the labor for the sake of the house of Israel. Go to the labor for the sake of the community. If you go to the labor for the sake of the community, there will be enough merit that is coming for the entire house of Israel. We are telling you this today because what we need today is more merit on the world, more tools that will expose light and battle darkness and overcome the darkness today. This darkness, this chaotic world is presented for us this opportunity. But the question now, are we going to go through this with pain and labor? And Yeshua says, there is no other way in the smallest. It doesn't even say the yod. He said the tip of the yod. Don't cut corners, Yeshua says. You see, because when you count properly, here is where you ending up. Let me show you this secret. Counting of the 50. God commanded us to count 50. What is the word 50 in Hebrew? Is the word chamishim. What is the root of the word chamishim? Chet, mem, and shin. Well, what is the word 50 also mean in Hebrew? Is there also the same word as the word me shi him or me si yanik? You want to know today, are you, am I a messianic believer? This is the answer I'm going to give you flat out. Do you want to know today if you're a messianic believer, messianic Jew, messianic Gentile? It's found in one thing and only in one thing. Are you willing and are you going from one till 50? Or are you cutting corner in your life? Are you cutting corner in the relationship with the Lord? Are you cutting corner in the relationship with others? This is all the questions. That we have to ask ourselves, there are 50. Am I cutting corners in fighting darkness? Do I compromise because of the darkness around me? Do I compromise because of the society today? What is right and what is wrong? Those are all the questions that we have to ask ourselves. If we are to become messianic and being messianic means that you are reaching 50, which means meaning that you're ready to receive a Torah, that a new Torah, meaning that you are getting ready to marry the Messiah. You probably wonder, why did God give us 50? Why is this number so important? A great secret and a great mystery is lying inside of it. The word 50 in Hebrew is equivalent to the Hebrew word Hevle. Hevle. Het equal 8, Bet equal 2, Lamed equal 30, and Yod equal 10. If you put this together, you get the number 50. What is the word Hevle? Hevle is the word for three veils, is the word for the bird things. What Isaiah the prophet spoke about, Hevle HaMashiach, Hosea spoke about Hevle HaMashiach, Jeremiah spoke about the bird pang of the Messiah. The bird pangs that you're going through today are equivalent in Hebrew to the number 50. I want you to understand what those 50 represent. What is this number 50 represent? The number 50 represent the klipot. 
the birth pangs, the things that you have to overcome, the 50 umbilical cords that you have to overcome today in order to be born again. Those 50 days are days for each and every one of us to be born again for the sake of the community of the house of Israel. What an amazing picture. So today when we are looking at the world and we're looking at what's happening, there's no doubt to say we are part of Hevlei HaMashiach. We are going through this time of Hevlei HaMashiach. Why? Because God hates you? Because he's angry? No! This is because he wants you to be fixed in order to get to the 50 days so that you yourself is ready to receive King Messiah. Everything that is happening right now in the world is happening for the purpose that you will be molded, that you will be changed, that you will be transformed in all the to be able to meet King Messiah, we are going to have Mashiach in the world right now. In order to change you. In order to transform you. So that you will be able to receive King Messiah. That we will be able to receive King Messiah. If you've been in our yeshiva, you know that when the text says, And the ark would travel and Moses will say, Arise, let your enemy be scattered, sc scattered. And let your enemies flee from you. And may the remnants, the tens of thousands of, of, of Israel, the champions of Israel return. No, notice something in this verse. Do you notice something here? The letter noon is upside down at the beginning if the ark would travel. And in the end of the ark of travel, you see the upside noon again. What is the letter of noon value is? The letter noon value is the number 50. It's the number 50. But notice that the noon is upside down. It's representing today your falling state. It's representing our falling state. Rather than counting forward, we are counting backwards. There are too many people today who are counting backwards. Oh God, I can't wait for the rapture. I had the countdown. It's like this song, the final countdown. People are counting backward. They are like the falling noon. But God says, when the ark would travel, you, when you travel with me, when you are going through the tikkunim with me, the noon is flipped back and you're no longer falling, but rather now you are standing upright. And when is it doing it? It's doing it when your enemies are coming after you. It's doing it in the time of travail. You know when God wants to reveal himself? He wants to reveal himself. To you right now, in this time, he wants to flip you, not to look backward, but look forward for the things that you can change inside of you. And that's why Yeshua said, many false prophets will appear and fool, and, and fool many people. And maybe people love will grow cold because of the increased distance from what? from Torah, but whoever holds out till the end will be delivered, Matthew 24, 4. and the good news about the kingdom will be announced throughout the whole world as a witness to all the goyim, just as we read in the counting of the Omer, and it is, where, is, it is then that the end will come. When will the end will come? Whoever all out until the end will be de de delivered. Today, our job is to hold on until the end. And how do we do it? We're doing it by climbing up this noon. What is the Hevle? These trials that you're going through right now. Rejoice! You're going through trial. You're going through tribulation. You overcome them. Rejoice. Stop looking. And count down to the days that you will be raptured. Instead, rejoice that God can use you today to your avodah to raise the sheaf 
the beacon and to say Mashiach, the house of Israel, he's ready. I am ready. We are ready together. So today we have to understand that your victory is the community victory. Your defeat is the community defeat. Your sorrow is the sorrow of the community. Your joy is the joy of the community. Because reaching the 50 means that we reach a level as a remnant, Hamishim, that is called Messianic, Meshichim. I pray for each and every one of you. Is your counting? Is pay attention to darkness in your life today, darkness around you, and battle this darkness. Don't close your eyes to it. If there is battles inside of you today, know that in these fifty days, there's an extra help from the heavens that is helping you. And know that the battle does not belong just to you. It belongs to the community. God is taking those upside noon and he flipped them. He raised you. You're not going to count anymore down. You're going to count up. You're looking up. I look up to the mountains. He didn't say I look down. I look up to the mountains. I look ahead. Commit today. Your life not to take shortcuts. Don't take shortcuts in your relationship with Hashem and your relationship with others. Do not take those shortcuts because those shortcuts nullifying you from being a blessing to the world around you. So today we are laboring together. And then thirdly, take the burdens of others. Take the burdens of Avatami. Take the burden of France and Africa and South America and Central America and India. Take the, the, the burdens of others. They might not be exactly where you are, but take their burdens. Take their burdens. Hold on to the end. Day 50 is around the corner. Make sure that you are ready for this day. Thank you, Lord, in the name of Yeshua, that you allow us today to count in pure heart and we're standing in the gap from darkness with our commission to take out the light and to reveal the light. Give us an eyes to understand these opportunities Give us the wisdom, give us the power, and may through all of this, a great merit will come to the entire house of Israel. I ask, Lord, for each and every one of us to be this great counter forward, forward to Hamishim. The word Hamishim in Hebrew means to be armed and equipped as you count forward and today our counting our changing our transforming mean that we have fulfilled the mitzvah as it is said through this may the Beta Mikdash of King Messiah will be established soon in our days as all of those things in the powerful an awesome name of our Messiah. Wishing you Shabbat Shalom. And may these words today and this counting will be meaningful for all of us.